Good afternoon. Welcome back. I apologize for the tech issues we had during our last forum. We've got them all sorted out for this one. I have both Dan Lesh and Ariana Elness joining me. Um, again, my name is Sarah Phillips. I'm the director of the Chamber of Commerce and Comfish Alaska Manager. Thanks again to everyone joining us today, especially those on the Hopin platform. If you're joining us using YouTube or Facebook, you're not getting the complete experience. And we just ask that you visit comfishak.com and register to attend our fully interactive event. Attendees can submit questions during this forum and any other forum. Forum in that forum stage Q&A area. So go ahead and look at that forum stage, click on the Q&A, and that's where you can submit any questions you have during this forum. After this presentation, be sure to visit our expo booths where you can interact with live representatives from our exhibitor booths and make liberal use of that people tab where you can connect via chat or live video with any other Comfish attendee. So our first forum this afternoon is the Alaska Seafood Market Updates. And joining me for that presentation is Dan Lesh and Ariana Elness. Um, as a lifelong Alaskan, Dan Lesh plays a significant role in a wide variety of McKinley research groups, fisheries, and coastal economic development projects. His professional experience includes commercial fishing, helping run his family's award-winning tourism business, and work for the Alaska legislature. Dan has a bachelor's degree from Grinnell College and an MBA from the University of Illinois. He has been with the McKinley Research Group for the last six years. And as a communication marketing specialist, Ariana Elness supports Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute's brand and messaging efforts, domestic consumer public relations, and in-state and fleet communications. Ariana has over 12 years experience in the Alaska seafood industry, ranging from processing work through college to growing an Alaska seafood startup in the Midwest. Living in Juneau, Juno, Ariana has been working with ASME since 2017. So please go ahead, take it away, Dan and Ariana. Great, thank you, Sarah. And I wanna start off by giving a huge thank you to Comfish and the Kodiak Chamber of Commerce. I know it can be really, really difficult to put on these virtual events. And I just really appreciate you guys creating the opportunity for us to present and connect. So thank you. And I also want to thank everyone who's tuning in right now. We have a lot of information to get through. We're going to start with uh, Dan Lesh from the McKinley Group uh, with an industry economic update. And then I'll come back with a bit about ASME and then also um, an overview of some of our current marketing efforts. Um, and then hopefully we'll have time to open it up for questions. So with that, I will turn it over to Dan. Thanks, Ariana. So as mentioned, I'm Dan, I'm a consultant with the McKinley Research Group, formerly known as the McDowell Group. We are purchased by McKinley Management, um, family of companies. We're part of their, their group of companies now. But we do the same work and we're excited to continue to be part of Alaska's seafood industry for another 50 years, hopefully. So. When the pandemic was unfolding last year, um, ASME re and contracted with McKinley Research Group to track the impacts, the economic impacts of the pandemic on Alaska's seafood industry. And, you know, we, we've, we conduct every few years an economic impact study that many of you may be familiar with. Uh, the last one we did was in 2017-18, covered that period, and I'll talk a little bit more about that period and how things uh, differed last year. The main buckets of impacts that we saw from the pandemic were, of course, increased operating costs, dealing with quarantining and strategies to keep communities and workers safe. Uh, it's hard to track some of these expenses for different sectors of the economy. The one sector we've been able to estimate it for so far is the seafood processing. And we this is a newly updated number. We, we estimate about 70 million was spent by seafood processors just last year. And, that number is likely to be higher in 2021 based on what we've seen so far and what people are projecting. We saw rapid and dramatic shifts in demand that we haven't seen in our lifetimes. For, you know, decreased food service and increased retail spending. Spent seafood purchases, both fresh and frozen, were up 30% in sales last year over 2019. Um, and then, of course, we saw a lot of transportation and logistic challenges 
we're far from a lot of our markets and a lot of our seafood goes to China first, gets reprocessed and shipped on. We saw reduced air travel and, and delays into China, some delays for months. We had ships sitting outside of Dalian, China and other places waiting to unload or even if they were able to unload, waiting to get into a reprocessing facility and incurring significant fees and and just delays in the supply chain. Of course, last year was hard for other reasons. We had um, biological issues in some of our key fisheries, especially salmon and in the second half of the year for Pollock. Overall, we see we're currently estimating a 20 to 25 percent drop in X vessel values in 2020 compared to 2019. As I mentioned, a lot of that is due to these biological issues that decreased harvest volumes, but there's a syner negative synergy there with um, the pandemic coming on a year that was already a hard year. But on the positive side, we uh, our fisheries still operated, the industry came together. I, um, you can all be proud of the fishing industry incurring all these costs to try to keep everybody safe and, and largely being successful in carrying out the fisheries. So kudos to all. Before the pandemic, this was roughly the size of our seafood industry. Uh, we had 29,000 fishermen harvesting about 2 billion worth of seafood and 26,000 processing workers turning it into about 4.7 billion worth of seafood products were then sold on outside of Alaska and for markets and further processing. Total economic output into Alaska's economy of 5.9 billion. And, you know, we're the largest private sector employer in the state and provide 172 million in annually in taxes and fees to local and state governments. Of course, 2020, that's not what happened. We saw a lot of different changes and a lot of this is is not it's hard to track a lot of this is preliminary information or extrapolations from available data so this is all subject to revision but from the data we do have we saw a big drop in crew license sales 21 percent we saw peak employment drop 31 percent in the processing sector as i mentioned the decline in in x vessel value that's about 500 million a drop in, in income to our fishermen and on the processor side we don't know exactly we don't have information on what the value of their uh, products but we do see in our export data that volume and value dropped about 16 percent so what, the average value per metric ton stayed about the same for export prices but the volume was down due to these lower harvests and other issues so we're probably seeing on the order of of a 15% drop in, in value for for the wholesale production. Um, in terms of how that translates into changes to economic impacts to the economy and to tax and fee revenue, we don't know yet exactly what that's how that impacts are going to unfold or, or have unfolded, but we'll be following up with future research. And certainly, as I mentioned, the industry still was prosecuted, all the fisheries happened and were key sectors of the economy in 2020, um, which can't be said for all, all parts of Alaska's economy. About three quarters of our seafood production by volume is exported over 100 countries. And for the last 10 years until 2020, we were, the value of our exports topped 3 billion. Last year dropped to 2.6. And some of that is due to increasing focus on the U.S. market. So the domestic market is our largest single market. And uh, other end markets that are key are Japan and Europe. A lot of our seafood, as mentioned, is shipped to China, also some to South Korea for reprocessing. This chart shows how trend, these trends have changed over time. Europe is becoming an increasing direct export market. Uh, China has declined significantly from about 29% in 2017 to 20% last year. That's in large part due to the trade disputes and the increased tariffs that have happened on both sides, um, but also the, the pandemic impact from last year. ASME's put a lot of uh, time and, and money into 
some of these emerging regions, like you can see Southeast Asia is emerging. It's an alternative to China for reprocessing. So we are seeing a diversification away from China to other parts of the world. Um, explorations were potentially in South America, certainly in Europe, there's options in Southeast Asia, there's already um, stuff happening there. South Korea is also a growing portion of our, our uh, direct export market. Important, always important to remember we're part of a very competitive landscape. Alaska seafood only represents 2% of global production. And even for our iconic species, we're still generally a, um, a, a small portion of total global production. Now I want to talk a little bit about how the pandemic unfolded for some of our key fisheries and how things are looking right now going forward for 2021. Of course, salmon last year had, had a very hard year, one of the worst years since the 70s. This year, uh, things are looking up a little bit in terms of forecasts, and the odd year supports increased pink volumes. And again, Bristol Bay had, had a bright, was a bright spot last year and likely will be this year as well. Uh, on the other hand, last year saw strong volumes, but weaker ex vessel prices for fishermen in Bristol Bay. We were saying it was down 50% from 2019, but revised that to 30 to 40% decline due to some significant retro payments that were made to fishermen this, this spring by processors. We've got, due to these poor fishery production in Alaska and Russia last year, we have been seeing strong markets for wild salmon last fall and this, this year with low inventory levels going into this coming season. So we're in a, in a uh, strong place there for to support prices this fall, although we still do have a, a glut of farmed salmon in the market that's been shifted from food service into retail and, and fairly low prices on the farm salmon side, increasing competition there. Pollock, as mentioned, had, had a slower season in the bee season. That was due to dispersed biomass and just harder fishing and smaller fish, reducing the production volumes of key products like surimi and fillets. About 5% of the tack was left in the water due to um, the difficulty of, of catching the fish. This year, the A season was hit with some really significant plant closures in Akutan and Dutch Harbor and other areas. And right now we're sitting at 30% behind um, previous years in volume harvested. Uh, hopefully we can catch up some of that that will have impacts, ripple impacts throughout other fisheries and, and certainly increased costs. On the positive side, Pollock's been really a hot item during the pandemic and, and well positioned to hit retail um, markets and the lower supply has led to strong pricing. So, Calvin Savefish were among the species most hit, impacted by the pandemic. And of course, those species were rolling. We're just getting started as, as everything was shutting down in March of last year. So those markets evaporated overnight. At, at the end of the year, we saw that held and markets recovered somewhat and, and a lot of those volumes were moving to the point where we harvested a percentage of the tack that was comparable with previous years. That didn't happen with sailfish though. We only harvested 72% of the tack in last year compared to in the 80 plus percent in most years. And that's due to just the prices being so low that it wasn't really always worth it for people to go fishing. Prices were down 40% for sailfish last year. On the positive side, we've got a longer season, which will increase options this year, and tax are up for both halibut and sailfish. Pacific cod continues to have declining uh, tax. Last year to this year, we're seeing another 20% drop in the BSAI. Um, the return of a direct fishery in the Gulf will be helpful to some, but it's still below past levels. This is a uh, Unfortunately, we don't have a Popeyes in Juno, but this is their Cajun flounder sandwich, but which I'd love to try um, in this Lent season. I I threw this in here partly because flatfish was a counterpoint where the volumes weren't there weren't major biological issues last year, but there certainly were market impacts, and they were hit as hard as anyone or harder with the delays getting into China, um, trampers, the certain.
processors use were hit were had the most difficulty entering China, and there are very few alternatives or no alternatives for reprocessing flatfish than China. And also, flatfish hit probably the hardest on um, the tariff dispute over the last several years, and that includes a exemption that expired this January, which we'd be talking a lot more about if it wasn't for COVID. So looking at this year, we got all these challenges still in the mix, trade disputes and the COVID costs. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're looking at higher costs for processing industry and, and likely other sectors as well compared to last year. Those are some preliminary results that, that's supported by preliminary results of this on, online surveys that we've conducted with 70 million spent on COVID mitigation costs in 2020, we could be seeing, easily be seeing over 100 million in 2021. Um, that's despite increasing vaccination, just because of uh, all the protocols are likely to remain in, in place. And we did see those huge closures already this year. Um, on the positive side, you know, we've got all these new consumers eating seafood. So our brand is as strong and relevant as ever. People got bigger freezers to fill and um, companies that, that are selling direct to consumers are seeing great strong growth in their in their business. And all these things are, are really exciting. And I look forward to hearing Ariana talk more about how ASME has been helping take advantage of some of these opportunities. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thanks for that update. I'm not sure why I have an effect in here. Oh, maybe Dan, can you mute oh. yourself and see if that helps? Yeah, and I should mention, if you want to track all this information, we, ASME's website has all of our the products we're producing out of our hope tracking stuff. So. Great. Thanks, Dan. Uh, thanks for that update. And as Dan mentioned, there are, of course, some significant challenges in the market. However, there are a lot of marketing opportunities that I'm going to talk about in this presentation. Um, but first, I'll give you a little bit of background on the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. We are a public-private partnership between the state of Alaska and the Alaska seafood industry with the mission to increase the economic value of Alaska seafood. We're funded by a half a percent tax on all ex vessel, uh, sorry, all ex vessel value, which is paid by processors, and that totals to be about eight to ten million dollars annually. We also receive federal funds through USDA market access programs, and those are um, programs that we compete to uh, receive and we um, compete with about 100 other commodities uh, and receive about $4 million annually. Those funds are matched um, from industry receipts. So we are now a fully, we now are fully funded by the industry. And that brings us to a total budget of about 12 to $15 million, which sounds like a lot. But when you consider that we are really competing with other proteins such as chicken and pork and beef who have much larger budgets. Um, we are really proud of what we're able to do with um, the funds that we have. As Alaska's official seafood marketing arm, we work to maximize the economic value of the Alaska seafood resource by building and protecting the Alaska seafood brand, developing and creating markets for Alaska seafood products, and working directly with the seafood industry to maximize our efforts. We are guided by a governor appointed board of directors, and we also have 10 species and operational committees who are incredibly talented, and we are very thankful for their guidance and time and energy. In terms of ASME staff, we have about 20 staff members um, across six programs. Uh, fiscal isn't listed here, but we have a domestic marketing program, international marketing, communications and consumer PR, seafood technical and global food aid. Um, so as Dan said, about two thirds of our seafood is exported internationally and about 75% of that, um, yes, yeah, so 75, two thirds of our seafood is exported internationally. And then the US holds about 25 to 30% domestically. Our international program is responsible for nine regional areas across 41 countries. We recently expanded our Brazil program into um, all of South America and then also added a Southeast Asia program. These regions were identified based on uh, regional trends and consumer preferences. And so 
South America and Southeast Asia came on board through an effort to diversify our markets um, after the China tariff situation. And as Dan showed, we're seeing some uptick in sales in those regions, which is really exciting. Um, some initiatives of the international program are in e-commerce, uh, trade missions, and seafood expos. The e-commerce promotions have, of course, exploded over the course of the pandemic. And while we haven't been able to hold trade missions, we have been able to um, hold some more um, in-depth seminars abroad and then also attend several uh, virtual seafood expos globally. Our domestic program um, partners with major retailers and food service operators. Um, you can see a variety of those operators here, including Costco, Sonic, Ibotta, um, to name a few. These custom promotions include social media, point of sale materials, product demonstration, and point of sale merchandising to ensure that these organizations are using messaging and imagery, and imagery that best represent Alaska seafood. And in 2019, we were the number one protein brand on US menus for the fourth consecutive year. Um, in consumer PR, we work with publications such as Food & Wine, New York Times, Vice, Bon Appetit. And we work with these publications to further promote Alaska seafood and make it recognizable to consumers so that when they see Alaska seafood in the store or at a restaurant, they already recognize it and understand it and associate it with being uh, wild, natural, and sustainable. And then our Global Food Aid Program works with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and U.S. Aid. These organizations have huge buying power and reach and a constant need for shelf-stable and frozen healthy and lean protein, which Alaska Seafood is, of course, perfect to fill. And our technical program creates quality handling materials for processors and fishermen, buyer's guides for distributors, chefs, and retailers, and then produces reports and research for both the industry and consumers on health, nutrition, full utilization, and industry efficiency. So now for our marketing update, I'm going to talk about some COVID-specific consumer trends. Um, these were trends that started to pick up speed in 2019, and then the global pandemic really accelerated them. And so now we're really able to lean into these trends and apply them um, across programs on a global scale because everyone is experiencing the same thing at the same time. And so this is a really good opportunity to launch our brand forward and keep people asking for Alaska seafood when we emerge. Um, so those trends are in health, sustainability and origin, and convenience and home cooking. So at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a 66% increase in immunity and stress food-related searches, and we've really seen that play out since. 72% of consumers are putting more effort into eating healthy since the pandemic, uh, which is a really good thing for seafood, because, and especially Alaska seafood, because over half of Americans describe fish as healthy. And this was a trend that as we had seen coming, and so we had already been creating resources on nutrient benefits, functional nutrition, and how seafood can fit into a variety of healthy diets. As we further met the nutritional trend and also went online by launching our wild wellness campaign, uh, in this campaign, we worked with third party experts to talk about the nutritional benefits of Alaska seafood. An example of uh, the success, a recent example of the success of this campaign um, is the results from our recent satellite media tour where we worked with Francis Largeman Roth, who hosted 30 TV, radio, and online interviews discussing how to meet dietary guidelines recommended seafood servings with Alaska Seafood. She included messaging on nutrition, sustainability, shopping and cooking tips, and these interviews had over 800 airings and resulted in over 741 million impressions. They're also doing similar work uh, internationally, working with nutritionists abroad. Um, sustainability is also a domestic and global trend. Europe and the U.S. have been really leading the charge for some time, and it's starting to catch on in Asia. Major retailers in Japan and China are updating their seafood procurement po policies to source sustainable seafood. 
Um, and, and sustainability is really popular there because it's heavily associated with taking care of future generations, uh, which is great for Alaska seafood. And of course, sustainability is written into our tagline and integral to the Alaska seafood brand. So we're really able to drive home that when seafood comes from Alaska, you're getting a high quality and sustainable product. Um, of course, that sustainability, that sustainability message is complex. And so we've been working to um, really refresh and distill our messaging so that it is clear and consumer friendly. We have a white paper on Alaska sustainable management, which we've made into a brochure, and then also just created an updated sustainability website, which you can find at wildalaskaseafood.com. So Alaska sustainability is of course tied to origin and in the vein of that origin story, um, there is a renewed interest in where food comes from as a part of food safety and trust. This graph is one of my favorites. It shows how consumers trust various entities to do what is right. And it shows that right now, individual farmers and fishermen have the most public trust. And this is compared to grocery stores, restaurants, fast food restaurants, and even plant-based meat producers, which are on the far right. And this is great for Alaska seafood. And so we're pivoting into this origin story um, and that trend by engaging more with direct marketers, which have had a huge rise during the pandemic. Um, so we've repurposed materials in a way that allows them to easily communicate the story of Alaska seafood with up-to-date and accurate messaging. Uh, these materials are not just available for direct marketers, but for everyone and can be found on alaskaseafood.org. We also are promoting to both Alaskans and consumers alike by uh, creating our Choose Alaska campaign. This campaign focuses on fishing as critical to the national and global food supply um, and something to be really proud of. Um, so of course, food service has taken a huge hit, but there is some good news here. Uh, research shows that seafood is the number two most craved and missed food at restaurants. So we expect this sector to bounce back significantly as things come back online. Um, in the meantime, we've been holding promotions around the world with restaurants to menu Alaska seafood and even deliver it to people's homes. Um, we worked in Milan with a popular chain called Chicken Quick to menu Alaska seafood. We worked with Chef Barton Seaver here in the U.S. to demo, demo takeout friendly recipes and encourage chefs to menu Alaska seafood. And we also recently partnered with the Global Distribution distribution company Cisco to create a Get Hooked on Seafood Toolkit, which provides tools and resources to help restaurants provide the best seafood experience. Um, and of course, the largest area that seafood is being consumed right now is at home. Since COVID, 66% of consumers are cooking more frequently. Um, we know that food has the emotional tie of community, connection, creativity, and fulfillment. And so we wanted to really create a moment around that. And so we launched our Seafood Sunday campaign um, where we partnered with influential celebrity chefs like Bravo's top chef, Joe Sasto, to create recipes and host Instagram Live videos. Uh, we've also partnered with retailers and chefs to hold online cooking classes and demos. And this is happening all around the world from Japan to Ukraine. This home cooking is really an amazing opportunity for the seafood industry. We just learned that over a quarter of general consumers purchased seafood for the first time ever. So that's one out of four general consumers are cooking seafood for the first time at home. This is a huge opportunity. And so we want to make sure that consumers are feeling well equipped to prepare to prepare Alaska seafood. Um, we know that seafood sales are up all across grocery, fresh and frozen. Um, and so we want consumers to know that it is easy and delicious to put Alaska seafood on their table. And so we launched an updated Cook It Frozen campaign, and we've been working to put at-a-glance cooking tips and recipe ideas in front of consumers. So ASME is doing a lot right now, but you can keep up with us by following us on social media. We have an industry-focused Facebook page at uh, ASME, sorry, at ASME News and Updates. You can visit our website at alaskaseafood.org. Um, 
And then we have a photo contest going on right now running through April 30th. You can also find that on our website. And of course, don't forget to check out the COVID-19 briefing papers that we are doing with McKinley Group. Um, so thank you guys so much. We are really proud to uh, work with the Alaska seafood industry and to be a part of such a hardworking group working to put healthy and sustainable protein on people's plates. And um, thank you again for tuning in and we'll take any questions. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions currently, so I'll just remind everyone that happens to be watching. If you are in that forum stage area to the right hand side, you'll see chat and Q&A. If you want to go ahead and submit your questions in either of those areas, please feel free to do so. And we will go ahead and wait just a couple minutes for those questions to come in. I, I think you guys did such an amazingly thorough job. There, there might not be much. <laughs> <laughs> We can talk about this all day. There has to be one out there somewhere. <laughs> so while we wait for questions, is there anything um, that, that you guys have going on that maybe wasn't covered in your presentation? Any pet projects? Oh, gosh. We have a lot going on right now. Um, and I can't make – I don't want to spill the beans too quickly too quickly um but we have been working for a while on our um atp photo acquisition project which is done um through funds that we received um that became available federally after the china tariffs um so that is a uh, new suite of videos and photos and so some of those we already have up in our media library and those can be found on our website And because you brought up photos, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your photo contest that you guys have going on? Are there um, any special restrictions to it? Any topics that are more desired than others for those photos? Yeah, we launched our photo contest a couple weeks ago and that's a way for us to refresh our own content um, and a way for us to connect with the seafood industry. We have some fun new categories this year, uh, including Alaska lifestyle and tell me you're a fisherman without telling me you're a fisherman. Um, and that's in addition to our classic best scenic, best boat. And so you can enter, if you're a commercial fisherman, you can enter your photos really easily at photocontest.alaskaseafood.org. And that closes April 30th and we will announce the winners in May. Okay, so just a month to go. I always love those. Tell me you're a commercial fisherman without telling me, and all those those are hilarious. That's so much fun. I think you guys will get some really great content. We're excited about it. <laughs> so I haven't seen any questions come through. So at this point in time, um, I know that to get more information, they can always uh, check out the ASME booth that you guys here have here at Comfish at any point in time during the show. And uh, they can always connect with a representative there as well. Yes, I will be there for another hour today and then also there tomorrow. So pop in, say hi, um, and we'll get in touch. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably, I'll pop over too if anybody has questions about the markets and the economic uh, trends that we're seeing. Perfect. And uh, all of our participants, don't forget that you guys can also schedule a meeting with any other Comfish attendee or presenter. All you have to do is find their name in the People's tab and request a meeting with them. So I'm sure that both Dan and Ariana would be happy to make time for you with any additional questions that you might have outside hours. And so Thank you both Ariana and Dan for sharing this information, which is so critical to the vitality of our commercial fishing industry. We look forward to welcoming you guys back next year, hopefully yes, in person. Absolutely. And uh, we will be back at two o'clock today, receiving an update from the office of the governor. And again, this and all other presentations this week wouldn't have been possible without the generosity of all of our sponsors. Um, which are listed in the chat and below this presentation. Thanks so much. Take care. Thanks so much, Sarah. Have a good one. You too.